Okay, team, in this question, we're gonna look at two groups of students in kindergarten. The first group of students is at that partial alphabetic stage. Okay, so they're gonna, we're gonna, this student is one, one group is gonna be at that partial alphabetic stage, and the other group is gonna be at a fully alphabetic stage. All right, now let's let's read the scenario. Uh, it's a wordy one. <laughs> it's from the reading specialist exam. So it's a little bit of a push, but it's a fun push. So let's push. Everyone, you got two minutes. Uh, read the question, okay? Read the question and pause me now, read it, and then unpause when you're ready. Go. Unpause. Okay. Uh, what'd you think? Did you see how wordy it was? I mean, let's just look at wordy. Look at this first sentence. Oh, how many times did you have to read that? I mean, that that's that's a pretty word. That, that took me two breaths to do. I mean, I, I tried it once and then I got like halfway in. I was like, oh, I got to take a breath. <laughs> Let me try it now. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. I'll take a deep breath. A reading specialist wants to enable kindergarten. Okay, I messed up. <laughs> Redo. This is a weird question, right? A reading specialist wants to enable kindergarten teachers to plan appropriate instruction and select appropriate books to support all children's growth as readers by helping the teachers learn how to distinguish between children who are in the partial alphabetic phase of word recognition and children who are at the full alphabetic phase. <sighs> Okay, so there's a, a reading specialist who wants to enable, or, or why don't we just say help? <laughs> help kindergarten teachers plan appropriate instruction and select appropriate books. That's kind of weird. Again, appropriate, appropriate books to support kid, kids, children. Okay, so let me get this right. We have reading specialists that want to help teachers to help kids. Okay. Um, um, and help their growth as readers by helping the teachers learn how to distinguish. Okay, so they want to help the teachers help the kids by helping the teachers distinguish between uh, the children who are partial alphabetic and the children who are fully alphabetic. So that was such a weird way of saying that. The reading specialist wants to help the kindergarten teacher distinguish which children are at this stage and this stage. Does that make sense? See how wordy it is? I know I'm kind of joking with this, but uh, from maybe your perspective, you're seeing that it is wordy. But when we break it down like this, reading specialist wants to help a kindergarten teacher distinguish children that are this and this, doesn't it make it easier? Hopefully it does. Which of the following characteristics should be a primary consideration to help identify fully alphabetic readers? So there it is. We're trying to identify a characteristic of fully alphabetic readers. Yes? So fully alphabetic means that they're using the alphabetical principle to decode um, each word, each letter in that word, or doing their best to decode uh, the letters and in the words, right? Okay, so let's look at number one. It says A. Is this one of the characteristics being able to read words that have a unique visual form by recalling and recognizing the words salient outline visual features? Or I guess it's recall the words visual features or the words salient outline. What's salient mean? So it's distinguished or prominent outline or visual features. What's that mean? Visual features. So what the student is doing is they're they're looking they're looking at a word and they're almost um, they're, they're recognizing it maybe maybe they've actually memorized the word and and they're recalling the entire word based on what they've recognized or maybe they've recognized parts of the word um, so it says salient uh, so maybe they're like B in bear and and they can they can recognize that B and get the bus sound. So that's a feature of the word bear, right? So it's like, buh, buh, oh, there's a picture of a bear. That's got to be bear, right? 
or or or, or maybe some maybe a, a, a another thing but i think that's what it's recognizing right uh a it's this is a feature of the word that helps them with a picture cue recognize it um could be other things too could be like the endings of words uh, as well uh, this is more uh, partial alphabetic. That's referencing partial alphabetic. How about B? Being able to apply uh, knowledge of letter sound relationships to identify the most salient sounds in the word. And then it says spelling nest with the uh, letters NS. So first of all, it's out because it's not a spelling thing, right? Uh, we're looking for um, a reading characteristic, not a spelling thing. But let's say it said... Um, uh, decode decode a word nest uh with you know so basically what it is is again what it is is the student in spelling they're um they're only acquire they're only looking at specific letters that they recognize or encoding specific things that they recognize so in the word and this is taking it to a spelling level an encoding level they're taking the word nest and the most prominent sounds that they hear in nest or salient sounds is the n and the s nest, right? And so if they were able to do that, well, they would be using a little bit of the alphabetical principle to match up some of the sounds they hear, okay? But again, that's a spelling thing and it would be out and they're really not mapping out every sound with a let with a with the correct grapheme and 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 completing it. So first of all, it's not an encoding activity and second, um this is another characteristic of partial alphabetic. So A and B are characteristics of partial alphabetic readers and writers. I should have probably done that. This is a characteristic of a partially alphabetic reader at, the, at that stage. And this is a characteristic of that same reader at that emergent writing stage, right? At that basic writing stage uh, where they're recognizing um, only at a partial alphabetic level and they're only decoding and, and encoding at a partial alphabetic level. That's tricky, right? Those are two tricky wrong answers. Let's look at the right answer. And by the way, there is a D and that D is located on this test. You can check it out, but I just have C here, the correct one. It says C, being able to decode words that have net. Uh, so this is how do we recognize that fully alphabetic student? Well, we can recognize them because that student is being able to decode uh, words they have never read before by blending letter sounds into recognizable uh, to a into a recognizable pronunciation or a recognizable word. I don't know why they're they're doing that that hype in there, but. Um, it, it reads as they're able to blend letters into a recognizable uh, pronunciation or recognizable word. So they're able to come across a word like cat. And they're able to um, blend the sounds together at cat and get and get a recognizable pronunciation. I mean, they're like cat. Oh, I know what a cat is. Or they're able to they're able to be like cat and, and they recognize that's a cat by using the decoding. Um, so here, that is a clue that they are able to use the alphabetical principle to correctly pronounce a word and recognize that word. What an awesome question, We're, right? It is so tricky. Um, what a great, and what a great answer too. It works perfectly with this. So team, if you, this is your friend here. That's your, that's your good, remember our friend that we've talked about on several, several other occasions. This is your friend that we're looking for right now. Okay. Not these others here. And uh, if we know our friend, it's going to be easy to spot them. The fully alphabetical, uh, fully alphabetical reader is using the alphabetical principle to do letter sound correspondence to pronounce a word or decode a word. That's what this says here being able to decode a word they have never seen before by blending letter sounds. It's another way of saying decoding uh, into a recognizable pronunciation or word. It, it's a, it's a, a weird, different way of saying it, but it's saying the same thing, using the alphabetical principle to map out letters to sounds to correctly pronounce a word or decode a word. It's a good question. 
if you know your friend, you, then you're kind of looking for it. You might be able to cross out these that don't match up. Okay. All right, team. The answer is C. This is a uh, a question from that uh, reading specialist exam. A nice push question. Okay. The answer is C. Good one to practice with. Okay. So uh, these exams here, this test here, and uh, a good one to practice with if you're looking for a push. All right. Okay. Uh, let us keep going and uh, let's now talk about, you know, we talked about how uh, partial alphabetic and pre-alphabetic, a predictable text would be sort of appropriate for that student, right? And now that we're talking about fully alphabetic and we know that they're using the alphabetical principle, right? Then uh, I think it's time we talk about what type of text would be appropriate for them. A, a fully alphabetic student that's using the alphabetical principle, they're starting to do the decoding process, it's probably gonna be suited for a decodable text. So let's do a case study.